Hi all, welcome to this part 22. This is a part of this playlist where we are looking at some of the real questions for AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification. Now, if you go through all of the previous parts, you will see in the comments a lot of people have cleared the certification using these explanations. In this part, we will look at questions which are linked with these three topics. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. You know, subscribe and likes helps me gauge the pulse of the audience. Needless to say, this motivates me to put in some more content which are lucrative from a certification standpoint. Please refer the previous parts for previous questions. Let's jump into this question, question 140. So there are some holidays coming like Christmas, okay? And you know that it is a shopping holiday. So usually people during these holidays, they shop a lot. Previously, people used to go to offline stores, physical stores. Now also they do, but the online traffic is enormously high. So what the question is asking is which service helps you with dynamic resource adjustment. So you remember we put applications web applications on ec2 instances you remember that so what happens there there are multiple ec2 instances on which your websites run and ec2 has this feature of auto scaling this is an excellent feature to adjust the compute capacity so if the load increases it will increase the number of EC2 instances. If the load decreases, it will decrease the number of EC2 instances. If a certain EC2 instance is corrupt, so it will replace the impaired instance automatically. And it balances the capacity across availability zones. So this is exactly what the question is looking for. This is the right answer. But let's look at other options. Cloud Trail. If you want to put governance on your AWS accounts, you can do that by using Cloud Trail. Now you may ask what the hell that means. So it is like activity. You log in, you have an AWS account and four or five people have access it will log the activity in the cloud trail events to keep logging like a user logged in they uh, initiated an ec2 instance they then did some work and then they dropped or deleted or terminated the ec2 instance and so on everything will be recorded so here we do not have this requirement. Does the question say so? Does the question say? No, the question is talking about dynamic adjustment of your resources. So CloudTrail is wrong. Amazon forecast, see using machine learning, it can definitely forecast your business outcomes. A service, but it is not going to increase the compute capacity. You want to increase the compute capacity. To handle more workloads since c does not do so c is wrong d aws config like i always give this example you have an ec2 instance earlier it was having rel that is red hat operating system someone terminated that ec2 instance and created a new ec2 instance with windows operating system okay so this you want to know who changed this configuration and etc. AWS config is the place which will help you understand the history behind changing the configuration, changing the operating system and so on. Does this question ask you that what happened when and that is something needs to be audited? No, it is asking you to adjust resources, to add dynamic adjustment of resources. That is what is asked. So this is the only option that uh, resonates well with this requirement. Let's look at this question. 
See, it's simple. You have to give a low latency experience. For example, you are a Netflix user. You want low latency experience. What does low latency mean? That means at the click of the button, there should be no buffering. You should see the movie as it is. And the worldwide user should be able to do that. So how would you solve this problem? Now, A says you use a region that is central to all users. So there cannot be any region which is central to all users. Some users may be in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in America, and so on. There can be no region which can be central. This itself is a wrong option. B says you use a second AZ. See, you use a second AZ, third AZ, fifth AZ, whatever you use, how it is going to help you with low latency. It will not. You are in a AWS region and you spawn two AZs or three AZs, it is not going to help you with low latency. AZ is a solution for from a high availability perspective so that the downtime of the application is minimized. AZ is not a solution for low latency. There are better solutions available. So B is wrong. C talks about enabling caching in the AWS region. Caching does help. It does help with low latency, but you know, purely caching alone will not help because if you want low latency experience if there was something like CloudFront where the distribution also has to be taken care of apart from caching then I would have told CloudFront is good but here they're purely talking about caching so let's also look at D. D says utilize edge locations and put the content closer to all users this is perfect this is perfect See, you can visit this documentation. It gives you all the regions, all the availability zones, and it also tells you the edge networks. Okay, so you can visit this and see where do we have edge locations and etc. So here we are more worried about edge locations. You know how Netflix gives you low latency because they put the content closer to the user using edge locations. And this is the best option out of these four. D is the best option, C is wrong. Caching alone will not help. You have to bring the content closer, closer to the users. And edge locations is the uh, mechanism that you should use to bring it closer to the users. So this is my final answer. Whenever you see such questions, always think about OTT platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and so on. Let's jump into the next question. See, there is already an optimization that has been carried out for the workloads. And the optimization, what it does is, it is trying to increase the efficiency and minimize the cost. So what cost management best practice can you demonstrate? So resource controls. So resource controls is not a cost management best practice because if you need certain resources, you need it. You cannot say that, okay, I my hunger goes away when I eat three bowls of rice. But let me just eat one bowl of rice. I will do my hunger control. That is not going to uh, you know, help you with solving the problem. Okay, you have to do better than that cost allocation so what you're saying is i will just allocate budget i will say cost hey you can only eat rice for five dollars that will also not help you with this because you know uh, at one side it, it is one of the cost uh, management mechanism but it is not solving your hunger problem see the cost management means uh, it solves the root cause of the problem in lesser amount of money so both a and b are wrong C take, talks about architecture optimization. See, architecture optimization is something which we should consider as a best practice if you want to reduce cost. For example, if you have an architecture which is heavily using, uh, for example, disaster recovery solutions, you have uh, the same application, multiple regions, and then you have to go and see whether do we do you really require that kind of architecture then you can optimize it. For example, you were used to eating like ice cream, you, normal bread, butter, food, for three course meals and etc. ice cream. And then you, you can really go and see whether do I need to eat such heavy food day in and day out. So that is your architecture opt optimization. In short, you are also looking at your requirements and trying to see whether do I need such kind of food to keep me alive every day. So C looks correct. D is talking about tagging enforcement. So when I hear about tagging enforcement, for me, tagging enforcement is like you're tagging certain set of policies forcefully. So policy forcing the policy will not help you with cost optimization. It is a mechanism to make the system more secured, but it will not help you with cost optimization. So this would be my final answer. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. It helps me keep myself motivated to put in some more contents which are very lucrative from a certification standpoint. 
this brings us to the end of part 22 there is a whole set of video on this playlist hundreds of questions please go through all of them they are still relevant if you have already cleared this certification take the time to go to two other playlists aws solution architect associate there are two playlists all questions are still relevant have a nice time learning see you in the next part